All right. Well, I'm on the East Coast, so it's afternoon here. And good afternoon. My name is Mitch Weisberg. I'm here with EdChat Interactive. And we have a really interesting show uh, today because um, we have Catherine Hargraves uh, talking about exponential thinking games to cultivate continuous innovation. And in these times, I think that we're all looking to find ways to innovate more effectively. Let's just, um, I'm going to share my screen for a second because I want, many of you have, have seen this, but um, here we have what's coming up in EdChat Interactive, and you'll notice that we have three events this week. Today, uh, we have Catherine uh, talking about exponential thinking games. On um, Wednesday, we have Tom Barry from the Cradle of Aviation Museum, who's going to be talking about uh, teaching with virtual museums. And on the 18th, we have Ika Johnson, who's, a, who's an educator from Houston, who's going to be talking about how do you give STEM challenges to students when they're not necessarily in the classroom. So those are the events that are coming up this week. And you can register for any of them at edchatinteractive.org. But today, we have a Serious Play Conference featured speaker, Catherine Hargraves and Hargraves and I'm going to stop sharing my screen and hand it over to Catherine. Awesome. Thanks Welcome. so much, Mitch. Happy to be here. Can everyone see my screen? Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, I just want to thank everyone for joining me in my uh, bedroom for this amazing webinar. And um, I'm really excited to see some familiar faces. So thank you so much for joining me today. This is something that um, we've been working on developing for the past uh, few months, to say the least. So we are so excited to take you on a adventure today. Um, so let's jump right in. I know that we are, we have a lot to do today. So um, let's get moving. Before we get started, I really want to invite everyone to get a pencil, some paper to write with. You're going to be taking some notes. So just know that if you can capture this information now, it's going to set you up a lot better for the future. Um, so grab that, whatever you feel most comfortable taking notes with. I think everyone's on mute. So let's stay that way. And there will be some moments to have dialogue and question answering. And the last thing I want to say is that if anyone gets lost while we're in this, like I said, we're going to be moving quickly. We are entering the portal of storytelling, um, but we're here for you. And we want to make sure that you are with us, like no one gets left behind on this journey. So um, we're going to introduce ourselves in a second. You already know who I am. I'm Catherine. And uh, I have with me my adventure capitalist buccaneer, Stephanie Wander. We're going to introduce her in a second, but if you find yourself getting a little lost, if you're confused, raise your hand. Stephanie's going to be scanning for that. You can also reach out to her directly in the chat. Uh, if you're not sure how to do private chat messaging, then just throw it in the chat. I want this to be a really welcoming, inclusive space for everyone. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun today. This is not your everyday workshop. Um, so let's not even play like that. We're gonna play differently. All right, y'all, let's do this. So I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about myself, but just to give you some context of who I am and what I do, uh, we're Arco, and we call ourselves alchemists. I call myself a culture alchemist in particular. And what that means is that I'm a transformational change facilitator. I work with companies and communities to design gamified interactive learning simulations such as this. And if you're like, what's all of that? That sounds like a lot of jargon. We're going to find out. You can tell me. <laughs> so that's who I am. I've been playing in the systems design space and the transformational space for, um, to be honest, most of my life, but officially for the past 10 years or so. And joining us, I have my amazing friend and facilitator, Stephanie Wander, and I'd love to give her a second to introduce herself. Hey, everybody. It's so great to be here today. I'm Stephanie Wander. I am an adventure capitalist. And what I mean by that is I teach folks how to tap innovation, create social change, and use design thinking and structured practices for actually finding creative discovery. I'm a lecturer at USC where I teach social workers how to innovate. 
And I'm also an innovation consultant on the side and I'm a former XPRIZE designer. So a lot of interesting practices in creating experiences that are transformative and innovative. And thanks again for having me here. Thanks so much, Steph. All right, y'all. So we're gonna keep moving. All I really wanna say about Arco is that, um, you know, we've been designing this really powerful workshop game. It's called Flex. And so today we're gonna give you a taste of some of the pieces of Flex. And calling it a workshop isn't quite right. It's definitely a quest. So this is some of our fave ways to play with clients. And uh, we're really excited to have you on the journey. Let's do this. So a quick status update, because I know that our world is different now and we're all in that together. And what's really exciting to me as a culture alchemist is everything changes. So we are in the mi middle of one of the most massive disruptions that our world has ever seen. Um, and so nothing is as it seems. We're rewriting all of the old stories. We're rebuilding old structures. So a lot of us, I know I'm not alone in this, have felt a little bit like, where is the ground? Where's my footing? How do I get through this? Like, what does life look like anymore? And so that's one of the most potent places that we can be as a human. When there's a lot of energy moving and things feel really destabilized, we actually have more to work with because we're not as um, deeply identified with our ruts or with our patterns or with our stories or with our roles. So if you are feeling at all discombobulated, like I don't know who I am or what I am in this totally new era, you're not alone in that. So I really invite you to bring that to this workshop because we're gonna work through that together. And how I like to think about this is sense-making through storytelling. So if you're not familiar with sense-making, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a way of making sense of your world by looking at the data within it differently, okay? And so today we're gonna to do that through a form of interactive storytelling that's gonna help you see the everyday that you might be dealing with from a completely different lens. So what we're gonna be talking about today is learning from your disruptions, living on your growth edge, and then putting it all into practice. Now, how I define living from your disruptions, what happens when we encounter massive disruption, it brings forward your evolutionary response, okay? So most of the time we have our toolkit for dealing with our everyday reality. We go to work, we do what we have to do, we check our email, we make dinner, we massage our kale, whatever it takes. But when we are faced with something foreign, unknown, all of that changes because now we get to figure out a new response. And what that means is that if we don't fall into fear, we actually have the opportunity to become stronger, okay? So when I say learning from your disruptions, the tendency for most of us when we feel something uncomfortable is to move away from it, like create distance. Ew, that doesn't feel good, get it away, bye-bye. Today, what I'm gonna invite you to do is to get curious about the things that might be challenging you. Because what we'll find is if we start to open them up and get really excited, like, what do you have to show me? What could exist in this space of unknown? The unknown will actually start to show you what's possible. So when I talk about living on your growth edge, what I'm really talking about is where are you stretching? Where are you thinking about um, responding differently because that's where you're going to start to become a new person. Maybe not right away, right? Maybe not in the next five minutes, but the more you do that, the more you play in that space of discomfort, the more empowered you're going to become because you're actually developing your resiliency, your grit. Okay. And what I have found is when we start to move away from our go-to response, this is how I respond in these kinds of situations. You know, I become the leader, or I become more rigid, or I become more controlling. So if we stop doing that, we're gonna start to see what other responses are available to us. And it's going to start surfacing what I call hidden genius. So all of the strengths that don't get to come out to the table because we have a way of doing things, we're gonna start to see what those are. 
So finally, putting it into practice. A lot of us get really scared when we're in the game. And when I say in the game, we're like at work, we have risks, we have things on the table. There's our reputation, there's our responsibilities. And what that means is that we can get really locked in. And so it gets really scary sometimes to feel like we're taking a risk that might put all of that, um, we might lose that, right? And we're already kind of dealing with a lot of upheaval. So the power of a game, such as the one we're going to play today, is to give you a safe space to risk, a safe space to fail. So just know as we're going into this, there's no right or wrong answer. There is no endpoint that you need to arrive at that is supposed to look a certain way, okay? So I really want to give you the permission to put it all out there today and really just see what comes up for you. This is a space of exploration, of experimentation, and of telling a story that is so powerful, a whole new world had to be built to support it, to live it. Okay. So do we have any questions before we move forward? Is everyone feeling good? Just nod your heads if yes. Awesome. Yeah, no questions. Excellent. Pat, if I can right, be prepared to for a second. Um, I see we have a lot of folks off screen, which we totally honor. Um, there's a lot of reasons why we know we can't always be on camera. But I just want to encourage everyone to have some fun with this. And if you can, try to join the journey with us experience it. I'm here to help. So feel free to chat me even if you are off camera. Um, and if you are, you know, cocking a second ear and listening, um, see what you catch either way. Um, but, but I want to just make sure that our off camera folks are, are, are feeling like they are able to engage if they wish to. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, I, had, I had an internet issue and I didn't catch the beginning. I'm sure I'll catch on, but how long will this take us? How much time will we delving into the multiverse this is eight hours no i'm just kidding just yeah, an I, hour. I, was, <laughs> I was planning for twice that much i'm so relieved now right. it's about an hour yeah. thanks okay yes yes and there will be this video we're recording so um we'll send this out i think mitch to everyone who is a part of this so you'll have this for your reference yes um, everybody yeah. who's registered will send you an email or everybody who's on here, well, you know, you'll you'll get an email um, linking to it, and yep. hopefully the slides too. If Catherine, you know, if you can send mm -hmm. me this, a link to the slides, absolutely. All right, y'all. So before we get started, last thing, here's the rules of the game. We've already kind of talked about a few of these. Number one, first rule: give yourself permission to break all the rules, all the rules that you come to this with this is what's right. This is how I'm supposed to respond. This is who I am. Let it go. Just get playful. We're here to explore. You're a pirate now. Okay. So whatever that looks like for you, whatever adventurer, explorer, pioneer, first people's archetype that you are holding, let's put it on. Um, as I mentioned, you might have some moments where you come up against an edge and you're like, Ooh, I don't know. This feels weird. Cool it probably will feel a little weird at times. So I just invite you to stay with it. If you really need support, reach out to Stephanie. She's here for you. Um, but really just allow yourself to acknowledge that it might not be what you expect, and that's great. Let's see what we can learn from it. As I mentioned, get curious about your resistance. Get curious about your challenges. Let us know if you need support. And as I said before, we're on an adventure now. So whatever it looks like for you to get fully into that space, right? If that's putting on like your cool adventure jacket, put on your adventure hat, I don't know, but let's dive in. All right. So as I mentioned, having a paper and a pencil is super critical because I'm going to do a little storytelling time and we're actually going to take, um, there's four parts to this story. And then at the, after each part, I'm going to ask you a series of questions that are designed to help you surface some really interesting pieces of your world. All right, y'all. So let's buckle up. And last thing I want to say is let's just pretend that everything that emerges in this space is essential. Ignore nothing. Okay. So we're going to talk about the territory first. 
You are a member of a tribe that has been living on a beautiful island. Historically, the land or the island has been abundant, a land of plenty. Now, of late, there are signs of disquiet on the island. The mountain at the center has begun smoking. The elders have gone quiet and no one knows why. The council has been mired in heavy discussions and the oracle has disappeared. You are one of the brave ones. You have been selected for your unique talents and now the elders have instructed you to go on a vision quest. So for those of you who don't know what a vision quest is, you are now to go out into the wild and come back with teachings on the nature of this time. And of course you agree. Okay, so let's take a minute and I invite you to go with your gut response. Don't overthink it. Have fun with this. So we're going to give you five minutes. I want you to write down your answers to the following. What is your smoking mountain? We all have one. Could be COVID. It could be, you know, your roommate who's giving on, getting on your nerves. It could be your boss. I don't know what it is for you, but let's imagine that you know. So what is your smoking mountain? Who is your tribe? Who is this group of people that you are a part of? Okay. Now there's many kinds of tribes. A family can be a tribe. A group of friends, friends can be a tribe. Your workplace. Okay. Who is your tribe right now? And finally, what unique talents have you been selected for? I'm looking for three in particular. So write those all down now. We're gonna give you a second to do that. So we're doing all this by ourselves. We're not chattering away. No, but we will have discussion opportunities. Okay, so I'm gonna... I can't be visual. I'll be frozen while I'm on the other screen tidying. I just wanted to let you know I'm still here. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Stephanie, how are we doing on time right now? How much we're going to give everybody maybe one more minute or so. Um, awesome. And folks, use both your minds. Write down anything. Even if it surprises you, you can always come back later and unpack things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to build on what Stephanie said, oftentimes our first response is our most true response. It's the primal response, not the learned response. And today we are very interested in the primal response, your instinct. Now, what you might find, everyone, is you're responding to these questions. Some of you might be tempted to go into a big story, write a lot of details. Do your best to capture what's essential and fill out the rest later. Okay, so let's move on to the quest part of our story. Now, before you leave, the elders give you a special talisman. It is said to be extremely powerful. As you leave your village, Townspeople gather to watch and whisper. Some of them give you things. An apple, a candle, and a beautiful flower. You place each one of these in your pack. At the gate, a woman offers you a cup and you drink from it. You make your way across the island for many days. You climb over sand dunes and you ford a roaring river. You weave through tall grasses and dense dark forests. You sleep under the stars. One night there is no moon and you are very exhausted. You're almost ready to give up. You haven't found any answers yet. So you light your candle and you talk to your most holy deity. This deity descends from the stars and gives you a magic arrow. It tells you to walk north in the direction of wisdom. Now, as you're absorbing that story, I want you to write down answers to the following. 
what might this special talisman represent to you? What special sacred gift have you been given to protect you and empower you on this journey? And I want you to imagine what the villagers might be whispering about as you leave. And finally, when we talk about a deity, I want you to imagine or ask yourself, what is the mission, ideal, or value that I worship? What is guiding me? And we'll give you just a few minutes to answer those questions. And remember to go with the gut instinct. Nice. Thanks for thinking so hard, everyone. I'm feeling the vibes of it. Let me give you all just a few more seconds to capture your notes to these questions. Again, we're not looking for all the words. We're just looking for the most potent words. All right, y'all, we're gonna move to the next part of the story, the Oracle. So the next day you head north, a storm blows in and you take shelter inside a grove of trees. All of a sudden a laughing hyena jumps out. It tells you that your quest is dangerous, a mistake. The hyena tells you to follow it and you do for a few hours until you realize that you're now more lost than before. So you reach into your bag and grab your apple. You give it to the hyena who stops to eat it. And while the hyena is distracted, you run away and into the forest escaping. Now you are back on the path and the path is taking you right up the smoking mountain. You see a trail ahead of you and it's winding right up to the peak. To your right, you can see an entrance to a cave, and both seem interesting. So confused, you consult the ancient wisdom texts of your tribe, and they tell you to go up, so you start to climb. And now I want you to ask yourself, what is your distracting hyena? What is derailing you or getting in the way of your journey? I'm just trying to take you off the path. And then ask yourself, what does the apple represent? How is this apple helping me get this distraction out of the way? And then finally, what does the wisdom of the tribe tell you? So what do you remember that gives you strength? as you move forward. All right, y'all give yourself about 30 more seconds to capture any notes, any thoughts on these questions. We have one more part of the story and then we'll have a little break to discuss some of what came up. All right, let's keep moving. And finally, we're at the last part of our story. The wind is powerful and almost blows you off the side of the mountain. You feel weaker step by step and you are just about to summit when a monster appears, it starts to run up the mountain after you. And at the top, a crater of fire awaits, filling the air with sparks. You are trapped. There's nowhere to go until you realize something important. You shoot the fire with your magic arrow and a cloud of smoke erupts, hiding you from the monster who becomes disoriented and falls off the edge of the mountain. As you're standing there, a giant bird lands on the edge. It tells you that it's time to share your story with the tribe for you have been initiated. 
When you arrive home, the people have gathered to greet you. The elders salute your return. And that evening, a large bonfire is held and you step forth to share what you have learned in the wild. You feel a sense of peace and clarity knowing what must be done to heal. I want you to take a moment before we move to the questions to really feel into that story and to feel into the feeling of knowing what must be done now. So just tap into that for a second, where it lives in your body, that fire of truth and knowing. And now I'd love for you to answer these last three questions. What are the conditions or challenges that are preventing you from climbing and summiting this mountain? Who are the monsters getting in your way? All right, so for those of you who played video games or still do, there's always a boss monster that you have to do battle with before you go to the next level. Who's your boss monster right now? And it doesn't need to be a person. It could be a situation, right? It could be something else entirely. You know. And then finally, what is your magic arrow in this situation? It could be a special gift. It could be a tool. It could be a person. It could be an opportunity. What does that look like? Okay. So as people are still capturing their answers, I want to create an opportunity for uh, some reflection or sharing. And I'll leave it open. My invitation to you would be, was there an answer or question that surprised you? Like, was there something that you realized that you were like, whoa, I had no idea that was operational in my world. And do you want people to raise their hands to volunteer to come up or, or do you want people to put that into the chat? Or we could even kind of arbitrarily put people into groups. How would you like to do that? Ooh, let's start with people raising their hands. So if anything is something to share that came up for you and there's no right or wrong answer, I'm really curious to know if anyone had some interesting realizations. I'll go, Kat. Please. Um, I think the initial question surprised me, my smoking mountain of just like the general pessimism that we're all facing in the world and just feeling like everything's so falling out of control. Where do you even begin to figure it out? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The figuring it out piece, we're going to talk about that next. Um, and we're not focusing on a destination today, but rather how do we navigate the journey in such a way that the smoking mountain no longer intimidates us, but actually invites us to engage? Anyone else? Well, I'll, I'll say that for me, you know, I don't know that this is surprising, but um, when it says, you know, what tribe do you belong to? And what popped into my mind is, I don't really belong to a tribe. I go between tribes. Mm. I go from tribe to tribe. Same. <laughs> That's a good insight. What about you, Ben? What came up for me, and I, I answered all the questions, but what came up for me was the noticing of the question that wasn't asked, which is, why am I going up this mountain? I mean, this is this is dangerous. This is like, there's, there's no one's ever come back. Like, like why do, why is right here right now? Not fucking perfect as it is. Why do I need to go on any quest to save anything? Um, mm. it feels like cheating a little bit. I'm like, maybe I'm running away from something. I mean, there's all these wonderful layers to it. Right. Like mm -hmm. I thought, wait, why am I, why am I suffering? Why is there a monster? Why am I running? What am I running away from? And what am I running towards? Do I even mm -hmm. know why I'm doing what I'm doing? Yes. That's a great insight. And um, what I love about storytelling is that exact uh, reason is that a story can have us look at one thing 
but sometimes it's the what's not being said or what are we not looking at? Why am I here in the first place? Why am I running instead of, you know, this other experience that I could be having? And so you kind of bring up this central question of why am I responding this way? And that's what we're going to am, into. I am the mountain. I am the secret. I am the arrow. I am the monster. You know, I mean, you can get, you can get really deep in there. Yeah. Good. That's what we hope for, right? Is I think a good story doesn't end with, it doesn't end at a surface reading. It should peel us open again and again and again. Uh, I just want to share a couple things from the chat. So Amy mentioned that it's, she felt like this was a psychological reveal. Um, Esla mentioned that for, for him or her, that the Smoky Mountain represented preconceptions, past, present, that they learned something about themselves recently that changed perspective on past and future. And then um, also Esla then added kind of interesting dynamics around the tribe and, and the difference between tribe and maybe outsiders as well. Yeah. Yeah, these are great. What's the difference between a tribe and an outsider? Is that the question? Well, we were, my tribe, uh, likely the outsiders. Mm. Or, or rather, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and there's, we haven't really talked about it too much, but the value of the outsider is super important, right? So like Mitch, I tend to go into a lot of different communities and pollinate them, right? So the outsider or the outlier is usually someone who does not fit in with the traditional established uh, mores or agreements of the group, but is essential to their survival because the outsider goes out to bring new knowledge in. So as you can see, the more we start to play with the story, it actually reveals a lot of different things to us. And then we get to start to investigate, well, how do I relate to this story? How do I relate to my role within the story? How do I relate to all these different things like Ben pointed out? Do I want to be uh, running from a monster? No. So that's what a story helps us do. It actually helps us see the aspects and elements and dynamics of our life from a different perspective because we're not as deeply embedded into them. The story takes on a very mythical dimension. It helps us see our lives from a more mythical dimension while still remaining really grounded. So I really appreciate all the diversity of answers. Um, I like that, you know, we designed this workshop to be very emergent. So we're not saying like, oh, we want people with this kind of answer. We're really interested in what's coming forward because that's always the most powerful information. Just one of my questions about the arrow, because you could have had the, the person fire the arrow at the monster who was mm -hmm. chasing you up, or you could have the arrow, the, but you had the person fire the arrow into the cauldron. So why did you choose the cauldron in, as part of the story? I'm going to let Stephanie answer that question. Um, the answers are we generate these stories kind of in the same space that I think we're asking you all to generate answers, which is the story emerged organically from itself as I was making sense of the story I wanted to tell in terms of how to explore a problem, rather how we were doing it together. Um, I just happened to write the first draft. But um, it kind of just felt very natural to, to confront the sort of smoldering issue at the center of all of this, whatever that was. But you'll note that there is embedded choice, right? Like I think you could explore this island for many different ways and layers and find lots of ways to explore your problem kind of in this world, whether it's going into the cave or under the cave, or perhaps going after the monster, right? Um, and if you if you felt like you wanted to make a different choice with that as you were generating your own story, I would say, go for it, rewrite our story. If you shoot the arrow at the monster, what does that mean to you? Like this is, you know, this is, this is about taking it where you want to, if anything feels inauthentic, rewrite it. You know, this is not proprietary. Mm. Thank you. And to build on that, um, we ran uh, this workshop for Google, you know, a shorter workshop for uh, one of their retreats. And we were asking teams, you know, their mission was get off this island alive, you know, kind of same thing, slightly different story. And one of the teams, when we had the group share, they were like, well, you know, we decided that we love our island. 
we decided that we're going to stay here and create a colony and they built this whole other story tangent that completely deviated from the mission but the beauty of it was they had a reason and that reason was the whole point we were telling the story was to like find what your investment and your um you know purpose is within this story why are you telling this story together so i invite anyone to deviate the story if you don't feel like it's authentic to you because even if it's the wrong story it's going to make clear where your path is this is great y'all i really appreciate everyone's comments and insights thank you for making this richer so what i want to talk about now so we've just told a really powerful story you may agree with it you may not agree with it doesn't really matter to me either way what i'm interested in is how are you finding your agency within this story how are you finding your purpose your meaning what meaning are you making from the ingredients that life is presenting you with okay this is not just a mythical story. It has real bearing on your life now. And so when we're given a story, when we're given a situation or a challenge that does not feel great, as Ben was saying, I don't want to go up the mountain right now. <laughs> I don't want to deal with a pandemic. But guess what? We get the pandemic. And so what is our response when life says, too bad? climb up that mountain okay so that's why we gave you the smoking mountain because in some way shape or form we're going to encounter that throughout our work and our lives and our relationships whether we like it or not okay and now we get to see how we want to respond and so what i want to talk about now is thinking archetypally okay so as you've noticed, we're all part of a tribe somehow, whether it's our like work pod or our drinking buddies or our bowling league or our family unit, we are part of multiple tribes. We organize ourselves within these groups and we have roles within them. Now, what I'm guessing you'll see is that you have a, a typical role, a stereotypical way of doing things. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with what an archetype is, I'm just going to break it down in my definition, which is an archetype is a pattern of behavior that persists across cultures. A mother has many different ways. There are good mothers, there are bad mothers, there are, you know, absent mothers, but we all can agree on what a mother is, right? So that's what an archetype is doing. It's giving us a really... Um, kind of groundwork, a structure, a foundation for how to talk about roles and identities within these tribes. Now, I've created some really simple definitions. I'll read them to you. But if you don't agree with my definition, create yours. My definition is not important if it doesn't work for you. Okay? And there's many archetypes. I've selected, let's see, six of what I think are some pretty common ones in, you know, workplace, in some of the more formal ways that we organize. But if none of these resonate with you, find your own. Ask yourself, what is the role that I typically occupy in my tribe? You heard me describe my role. I'm the alchemist. I'm always like, how do we do this with this? How do we make this into that? How do we take this problem and make it an opportunity? So I want you to ask yourself right now, how am I showing up in my tribe? What role do I identify with? And I want you to write that down. You can use one of these that I have up here, the visionary, the coach, the good Samaritan, the boss, the challenger. But again, feel free to write your own definition or write your own role down. And this is the role that you you show up with the most. You might have several, okay? But this is your dominant one. This is your go-to. And you might have a few, so just feel free to write a couple down. Whatever pops up for you. 
And I'd love to give people an opportunity to ch a chance to share um, uh, the role that they identify with most. So what archetype do you see yourself as right now? And a quick sentence on why. I'm the boss because I love being a leader at work or um, I'm the storyteller because I love rich stories that make people come alive. So feel free to either raise your hand, jump in, share in the chat, whatever works best for you. All of these work great for us. What archetype do you identify with the most? And I'm gonna read these through really quick so I know that the font is a little small. So how I've defined the challenger, it's the person who uh, challenges expectations and assumptions, right? That person who never takes it at face value. There's the boss. This is the person who takes responsibility for the tribe in a time of chaos. They're a leader. There's the storyteller the person who holds the history of what happened, right? The person who sees the lesson and shares it with the rest of us. There might be the visionary, right? If you're someone who thinks outside the box, who is navigating and confident in a time of chaos, you might just be a visionary. If you are the person who is always helping others, mentoring others, inviting them to step into their best self, you might be a coach a teacher, or you might be someone who is a good Samaritan. It's always looking for the good to amplify it, to support it, to make, get it out into the world. I'm curious, does anyone have a specific archetype that was not shared up here that they'd like to speak to? Yeah, we have a bunch in the chat. Please, would you read them out loud? Absolutely. So um, a few of our friends had thrown out investigator, researcher, Nosy Parker, basically something that captures curiosity. Yes. A connector, so identifying overlaps and links that make meaning. Yes. I really dig this one, the person you turn to in times of need. Mm, yes. Um, <laughs> just like my heart goes on. Uh, challenger, visionary, um, visionary, adventurer, storyteller, harmonizer. Mm. I love that people are like, no, we are just, we are just going hybrid, like, building it. It's so great. Yes. Um, caretaker, visionary, challenger, visionary, elevator. I bring the group up so each can be strengthened and contribute more. Uh, visionary trickster, <laughs> reframer. Um, I see more positive interpretations that shift the group forward. Connector to connecting ideas, needs and resources, connecting people. Mm -hmm. Visionary storyteller. I see the world rather uniquely. Um, pro photographer for one, and I capture the audience when I bring the magic I encounter on the edges of reality back to the mm. tribe. So amazing. You guys are doing phenomenal work. We love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love hearing these. Really powerful. And um, I just really want to honor everyone's special sauce in there. I heard some really great language and some really heartfelt language. And um, it's just really beautiful to hear what y'all are holding in your tribes. So now we're going to talk about, when I talk about evolutionary response and I talk about our go-to strengths, right? So I'll use the example of, um, I'll use myself as an example. How about, so one of my go-to strengths is that I love transformation and I've become very skilled at seeing problems very good at identifying what's not working and what wants to shift. Now, this has gotten me a lot of success. It's gotten me a lot of opportunities. It's gotten me a lot of gigs, but it's also brought me a lot of uh, challenge because when I'm constantly able to see problems, I see a lot of problems. And so it's easy to get sucked into this whole identity of being this you know, alchemist and is always transforming things. And sometimes I'm like, I just want to rest. I don't want to care about the problem today. So I share that because what I want you to think about is how your go-to strengths can become your weakness if that's all you're relying upon, right? So when we use something over and over and over again, we become accustomed to it. 
So if we're not challenging ourselves to step forward and step out and kind of get into that growth space, that's an area that becomes weak because it's undeveloped. Now, if we were in our, our full length workshop, we would spend a lot more time really delving into what is your strengths and what are some weaknesses, right? But today we're going to work with your gut response because it's usually your most accurate. Now, we just looked at some archetypes and some roles that exist maybe more commonly than others. And now I want you to ask yourself, reflecting on this past archetype, the one you just named, what are some of your core strengths that this archetype reflects to you? So if I think some people already said them, right? If you're a photographer, I see people. I capture people's magic, right? So just quick note some of the strengths that come out of the archetype you just mentioned. Celebrate them, make note of them, honor them, and then we're gonna play with them. Where's my coffee? Okay, great. And if you're not sure, it's okay too. Again, go with whatever comes up and let's just trust it. Now, you've just written down some strengths. And now I want you to look at some of these other archetypes that we've offered. Maybe some of the lesser known, maybe some of the riskier ones, maybe some of the, um, the ones that just don't get as much space, right? We have a world that emphasizes certain things and minimizes others. And I know, for instance, that the mother is a role in the workplace that tends to get minimized. And I'm not saying you need to carry a child to term in order to occupy the mother role, right? The mother role might be saying, this week I'm really devoted to helping others be their best. And I'm just gonna mother their gifts because that's how I wanna show up. So here's where we're, kinda, we're gonna create what I think of as a bridge. So you've identified some strengths, and I want you to identify a place where you might not spend a lot of time. And how you're going to do that is ask yourself, what would feel really uncomfortable for me? What kind of role is not my go-to? If I'm always the, you know, very like direct, disciplined leader boss, maybe the thing that feels kind of uncomfortable is being the student. So ask yourself, what is the opposite of what I normally do? What is the opposite of my go-to? And see if there's an archetype that comes up. It might be one of these, it might be something else. But what is another role that makes you feel really like, ooh, that's, that's not where I like to be? Can we see the previous slide again? Mm -hmm. With the other archetypes? Yes, we can. I just want to remind everyone too, there's so many archetypes. I've selected some of the ones that I'm familiar with, but please know if you don't see something on here that speaks to you, any answer works. We're looking for what is emerging in you. And I would love for us all to take, if anyone has uh, would like to share some of the archetypes that they're interested in cultivating. Maybe an archetype that makes them feel really uncomfortable. Feel free to raise your hand, share it out loud, write it in the chat. I'm really curious to know what feels uncomfortable for you. Well, for me, it's uncomfortable to ask for help. Mm-hmm. So how would you name that as an archetype, Mitch? Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of a one word thing. It's like a person mm -hmm. in need, um, displaying weakness or uh, displaying vulnerability. Mm -hmm. But I can't think of one word. Mm -hmm. The vulnerable? I think that's a really good one. And this isn't part of the workshop, but I would say just for fun, for those of you that are like Mitch and finding a word that you're like, ooh, I'm not that, but what's the archetype? Play with it. Like Mitch, when you were talking, and, and I hope this is okay, I, I was like, oh, baby bird is vulnerable. 
right? Like a baby bird needs to be basically fed and held and literally like in a little supportive environment, right? So just know that your archetype doesn't need to be a person. I work with the mountain archetype a lot. So you might find as you're playing with this that, wow, you're like, I feel really vulnerable and a baby bird is the best thing that represents that. So all of that is great. And thank you so much, Mitch, for sharing. I really appreciate your vulnerability there. Stephanie, do we have any in the chat that you feel compelled to share? Oh my gosh, we have some really good ones. Um, I knew we would. <laughs> you know, it's interesting, a couple of folks um, put up about needing to be the boss or, or be the champion. Um, mm. Activist or challenger right now is coming for folks. Oh, and someone um, then just threw out, um, being a follower servant mm. and that, that could be a role in and of itself and I would certainly urge us to unpack that and think about when is that when is that in and of itself really powerful and when is that potentially um not allowing us to unpack ourselves somewhere in that right I, th I think it's really compelling question about what what role that plays and how that serves all of us mm -hmm. and that's just a quick time check we're at about six minutes left for today great Mitch do we have any wiggle room no, there's no fixed schedule. Okay. So if you go five minutes over, if, if people don't want, you know, if people can stay, that's great. If you go 10 minutes over, um, it's not like I'm going to turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> awesome. So I'll say to this, everyone, we have two more slides left. And then I want to open up a little space for some questions and discussion afterwards. So we'll definitely complete the workshop in the next five minutes if you have a hard out. If you don't and you want to stay around and just kind of um, get into the squishy space of questions with us, we'll have time for that. So thank you so much, Mitch. So I want to touch upon something Stephanie just brought up with this beautiful um, servant, kind of servant leader follower. I know that we're in this space right now where there is a lot of um, conversation around what is the best way to show up. Thank you. Um, so I really want to illuminate that there's a role for everyone and that it doesn't always look like the role that's the most popular or the role that's the loudest. What I've noticed is that there's a lot of people doing incredibly powerful work and advocacy and activism behind the scenes of social media. And so I, I really want to acknowledge this beautiful share of a, of a servant follower because I think what people tend to think of sometimes is that, oh, it needs to be really active. It needs to be this. When sometimes listening, right, holding a space of, um, I, I don't want to use the word passive, but more of like a reception for others, a holding space is a very powerful role. Um, so I just really want to acknowledge and honor everyone's archetypes because you are all playing a really important role right now and you're all going to play it differently. And that's the fun part of this game. So, all right, y'all, I want you to think about this new archetype that you are cultivating more. I heard, you know, activists and leaders and, um, you know, people who are really, I think, fired and fueled up by what's happening. So it's great. So we're going to talk about what you can do with that next. Let me just get my mouse over here. There we go. So just like in a video game, you have just selected your character, right? So think of this as like you just put on the superhero suit of your new avatar. And now I want you to think about using this new perspective maybe it's the activist maybe it's the baby bird maybe it's the servant how can you access your avatar's perspective right the lens to think of three ways that you can approach your smoking mountain this week okay so it's not a solution i'm interested in what is a perspective or an approach that you can use to come at this thing that feels really challenging to you. And lean into your avatar, your archetype, because this is why we're using them, they're powerful. You can actually put them on like battle gear. And so that's how we wanna play with archetypes. 
that's where they become most powerful is when we actually start to work with them to unlock their gifts. So again, gut instinct, we're not overthinking it. We're not trying to design the perfect strategy right now. But if you were to ask yourself, hmm, how could I use the mother to think differently about this gnarly problem I have at work? So just jot down a few suggestions for yourself right now. And I'll say this, if it feels like, ooh, that's kind of uncomfortable, you're on the right path. We want to stretch ourselves. We want to play in the places that don't feel, um, it's not that they're bad, it's not that we're weak, it's just that we have less practice playing there. So how can you play in that space? Okay, so I know that there's a lot coming up right now, and um, I want to give you all just maybe like 30 more seconds to jot down some different approaches that you could try, and I really want to encourage you to think about an approach that could be tried this week, not five months from now, not when the pandemic is over you know, like now, because that's the whole fun of this, to put something into action as we feel it, as it emerges, as it arises. There's never going to be the perfect time to take action. There's never going to be the perfect moment to put on our activist outfit and come out swinging, right? We get to practice that in our every day. So if you're asking, well, what does it look like to be an activist if I'm at home? great question. Those are the kinds of questions you want to be asking. Now, you've just defined three potential strategies, approaches that might take you someplace very different this week, very different from your usual go-to. And that's great because that's how we increase the terrain that's how we expand ourselves, is we go places we haven't been. So, scariest thing is to do something new that we've never done before. So, how will you walk the plank? How will you hold yourself accountable? The plank doesn't need to be a bad thing, but it does need to be, there is no exit from this opportunity to try something different. So I like to think of this as what agreement or action can I commit to in the next week that will ensure I stay with this new approach, this new way of doing things? How do you ground that? And if you're not sure, again, feel free to throw a question in the chat, raise your hand, jump in. Okay, Stephanie, do we have any questions in the chat? Um, no questions, but just really cool observations about ways that people can move more in the direction of um, the, these new archetypal energies that they're they're defining. So um, one person suggests joining a like-minded um, community of people. Um, talk to colleagues and connect with those that you haven't maybe connected with in a while. Um, some are saying let's invoke more balance or um, uh, try to integrate different approaches. Um, Amy writes, without taking action we're stuck in a side cave, never getting to the mountain top, right? So I think we're having some really powerful observations and ways of thinking through these lenses. And, and for some of us, the picture may not be clear. Like we may not know yet mm. how we want more of that. But I think one of the fun things about this is we get to stew on the symbols that we've invoked today and the things that have come up for us. And so you may not have a clear path forward yet, but we're starting to get a vision of where we might be able to go that's different than where we currently are. Exactly. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Thank you for sharing everyone. Um, I really love hearing just the diversity of responses, because this is what a tribe does, right? We are a learning ecosystem. 
So this little temporary tribe of this webinar is already starting to cross pollinate and show you all the different ways that you can play with these different tools. So I want you all, like I'm not your mother, I'm not playing that role for you, but I really invite you to hold yourself accountable to doing this, okay? And if there's a way that you can bring in a friend or a colleague or a partner or whoever to really witness you and keep you accountable, I invite you to do that because that's one of the most powerful ways that we can start a journey is by inviting other people into it to be present. And finally, I want you to take an oath to yourself. So you've written down a few approaches that you can try, but I want you to really root down and pull forward. Who are you now as a result of this workshop, as a result of these inquiries and investigations, as a result of what you've learned about yourself? And as Stephanie said, this is going to continue to seep through your life. That's how archetypes work. They don't just drop and here's the answer. It's not a textbook. It's a living, breathing tool. And what you'll find is you might encounter something like, oh yeah, that's my smoking mountain. Oh yeah, that's my apple, right? That's what I hope happens for you. And now I want you to reflect on what is the oath that you are making to yourself today? And I want you to use this structure. Now I am the person who what? What do you do? Who are you? What are you committing to as a result of what you've seen and experienced today on the journey? And there's no right or wrong answer. I'm interested in your authentic, honest response and your vulnerable response too. And I really invite you to share in the chat your oath. Now I am the person who stands up to my mean boss. Now I am the person who advocates for marginalized voices. Who are you committed to being? Yeah, I just had to read a few of these. In the yes. Um, now I am the person who makes life easier for others. Now I am the person who does not ignore myself. Now mm. I am the person who makes others more resourceful. Mm. Now I am the person who chooses to lean into the flow of my archetypes as they transform to meet the moments I encounter. Now I am a person who has courage to be new and to venture into the unknown. Yes. Now I am the person who is confident and moves forward and does the thing. More present and cognizant of the zeitgeist. Mm. Yeah, wow, guys, these are incredible. Really beautiful work, everyone. Really powerful work. Now I am the person who wears pants during the lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I admire the vulnerability of that one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm still getting there, so you're not alone in that journey. But I am wearing pants today. So uh, we are about five minutes over. I do want to give people a moment to digest and share. Um, and I also really want to say thank you and witness you all in the really powerful work that you've done today. Um, the powerful thing, what I love about stories is they, they feel so simple on the surface and then they open us up and we come out like, oh my goodness, you know, what was that? So if that's you today, if you feel opened up, amazing, because that's the whole point of this workshop. It's really to dig into the places that are not so obvious to us, that don't feel immediately accessible, but are extremely transformative and potent for our work on this planet. So. I have three questions here for you. Um, my, the first one I'll explain because I think it's kind of confusing. What just happened? And what we do in, in the Flex Workshop is part of our sense-making rituals is the teams who take the workshop tell the story back to us. So what just happened in here? Did you go on you know, a journey to your deepest core did you get confused and stranded in the dense forest somewhere? I'm really curious to know what just happened for you. And you can tell me that in a really clear, you know, normal way, or you can get weird and mythical. I'm open to both. And feel free to share in the chat. You can raise your hand. You can just jump in. Cool. 
or if you'd like to answer a different question entirely, you are very welcome to do so. Oh, Kat, can you hear me? Now I can. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to say this has been very confirming because all of the imagery I've actually been feeling and living and getting the signs of the same story that you wrote. So it just bridged my, what I thought was my mythical reality in some other dimension to this earthly reality. So it was very powerful. Like I've been telling everyone, I feel like we're at this point where we're all like facing the biggest boss of our lives and you know, all the imagery and the forest and the island, it just all resonated. So mm. I wanted to thank you for bringing the magical into the tangible space. Oh, thank you so much for that, Lindsay. Um, yeah, this, thank you. That was really beautiful. And I love hearing that all of the um, symbols were present for you. Thank Isn't you. it interesting how it's like the individual and the collective are so deeply connected? Yes. Mm. Thank you. It felt, Anyone... to me, it felt to me like we were um, uh, people all over the world in geography and time zones uh, and backgrounds and ages and, and creeds and all this stuff. It's like we hopped into a, a car together and, and created a, a shared reality. You know, I believe that our, our focus determines our reality. So even through the use of this strange technology where we're all just interacting with ones and zeros, we've shifted our focus deliberately to a world where I'm thinking about a mountain and not COVID, et cetera. So we've, we've, we've created a, a, a collective, um, we've co-created our own reality for the last hour yes ben we did so one of my um big uh what do they call it like big transformative massive transformational purpose that's the word um is rewriting the story of humanity and obviously that's not something one person can or should do alone it's the job of everyone but as i've asked myself that question of like pfft, what does that look like? Um, it became really clear that some of the most powerful technology is also some of the most ancient technology because it survived history to be here. And I think the more that we can come together in these collective pods, right? Like there's people in here all over the United States. There's people here from Ecuador. There's from uh, the UAE and Pakistan. And that's really beautiful and powerful because how else are we going to start putting those stories into something more cohesive and bigger. Um, and I think there's room for everyone's story and it's just a matter of awareness around what is the story that we're interested in telling? Like what story gives you life, right? And I know personally some of the foundational stories of America are very not life-giving. So the more that we can invest in the stories that bring life to us and our world, um, I think that's an extremely powerful and productive time, use of our time. So thank you for acknowledging and recognizing that. And thanks for meeting me here in this reality. Anyone else have anything to share? All right. So I'm just gonna do a quick mention. This is Flex. Um, Steffi and I are facilitators for ARCO, uh, that's the company, and Flex is the workshop. And essentially what we do is we help organizations, teams, um, become evolutionary. So really start to learn from disruption and embrace it as a mechanism of change. And the more that we can align ourselves with mechanisms of change that are evolutionary, I think the faster we can get to this cohesive story of what the new era of our world looks like. So if anyone's interested in talking further with us about this, um, we do run a modular workshop pathway. And so this is just a taste of some of the work that we do with clients. Um, please feel free to reach out. Mitch is gonna be sending out an email afterwards with uh, the deck, the recording, contact information if you're interested. Um, and I just want to say like a huge thank you for being oh, here regardless and, of- And do you have yeah. a slide with your contact information? I know people just go to arco.world. Right? Yes. Okay. Because on the, on, on the, if people who watch this 
later on on the archives, you know, I'm not necessarily sending them something. So let's, let's, you know, just wanted to make sure that your contact information was here. Thank you so much, Mitch. Yeah, y'all, if you want to reach out to me, my email is below. It's cat at arco.world. Um, and it's all spelled out for you right there. It's A-R-K-O. It's cat with a K. And um, yeah, we're here for you. If you are interested in talking more about this, if you just are interested in sharing more, um, please reach out. It's always so interesting to hear what people do with these stories and experiences. And um, I just want to give everyone a big heartfelt thank you for being here and taking time out of your Monday morning to uh, go on an adventure with us. So thank you all. I hope you have a great week and a great day. And um, we look forward to seeing you soon, I hope. And thanks yeah, so much. And my guess is that people can find out a, a different experience from you at the Serious mm -hmm. Play Conference, correct? Yes, yes. So that's another opportunity for people to interact with you. And it's a great conference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that will be next week. Is that something you're going to include in the email, Mitch? Um, I could. I could if I don't turn it into a pumpkin by then. <laughs> I don't believe you will. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, well, I have a question for you. Yeah, please. He's asking what does ARCO stand for, if anything. Oh, wow. So uh, I'm, I'm, this is a story that I'm just starting to tell with the public. Um, ARCO is, I'm not a religious person, but it does stand for the ARC of humanity. Um, because my business is the vehicle of transformation to help people do that work of telling this new story. So I really wanted something that felt uh, mythical and big, and Arco is what came forward. So we are that cosmic vehicle to redesign the world. And uh, we're looking for interested pirates and explorers and adventure capitalists and culture alchemists to join us. I thought this was great. I really, I really enjoyed the session. It really ca caused me also to, uh, to think, to think a lot. Um, yeah, look forward to interact, continuing to interact with both of you. Thank you. Thank you. It's such a wonderful, wonderful experience. Thank you all so much. Take good care of each other, everyone. We'll see you soon. Yeah, stay healthy, everybody. And uh, this is Mitch Weisberg. I'll say uh, thank you and have a good afternoon or day from EdChat Interactive. And hopefully see you all online and at, uh, the, uh, and at the conference. Take care. Bye. Thanks so much.